Today, our walk starts at Calfrosco. So initially, we take the local bus. Wednesday of the week, and we're off walking again. From Calfrosco, we take the Celeronda gondola to Jimmy's hut. We then follow paths 8A, 8, and then 3 to the Utia Col Pradat and take the adjacent gondola back to the outskirts of Calfresco, where we continue along track 10, making our way gradually down to the river and then following the river valley path back to La Villa, a total distance of about eight miles. Wow, almost takes your breath away. I didn't think that the scenery could get any better than Monday's walk from the top of the chairlift in Badia. But the mountains here are almost overpowering. First impressions, so dramatically beautiful. The walk to the gondola station isn't very far, but it is through flower meadows. Mountains on the other side. Coming down to the cable station. With all the mountains surrounding us, Little, very uh, awe inspiring. To where people live. So you can France and Italy. Yeah. The gondola ride is in two stages. Mm. There's no need to get off and back on again, as it is a from, continuous from, um, journey. The information people climb and then um, walk along there, but we didn't do that. And Morn and Peter were here yesterday, but did a higher route from wow. Jimmy's hut. What a starting place for a walk. What a starting place. Just a quick photo to start us all off. That is Jimmy's hut. We are dwarfed by the surrounding wow. mountains. It is so spectacular and dramatic, quite breathtaking again. What a start of a walk. <laughs> There's high willies over there. <laughs> and one high willy here. <laughs> Car station. My sense of humour is definitely getting worse. As we start our walk, the alpine flowers make their presence felt. Spin over. You see his head? See this, that, that big rock there? See the red come from the red? Peter has spotted something. I think it's a marmot. He eventually gets a picture. The pathways, at least to start with, are rugged and slippery in places. Louise has a fall, but luckily she's okay and we can continue. All are now being really careful. I just don't know what to photograph first. The mountain scenery, or the flowers. There are so many different types of flowers in this one area alone. Nature at its best. If we don't move on, we'll be here all day and night. But it is great to be able to wander about freely. There doesn't seem any restrictions at all on that aspect.
differing areas have a dominant colour, which can change. Pink and yellow are the colours here. We are reminded that this area is a nature park and that there are various pursuits that are prohibited, amongst them being camping, shouting, hunting, picking flowers and of course lighting fires. It also forbids mountain biking, but we shall see. Wow, what can you say? The flower meadows are broken up by small areas of pine trees and other shrubs. Okay. I'm not sure what the function of the water cascade is, apart from shooting water onto the pathway and making it really slippery. Making our way through a sort of little bunch of pine forest type trees here. Peter has provided us with some excellent panoramic photos on our walks. This has to be one of the best. The timber huts here are now falling into disrepair. It's not surprising though, considering the weather conditions they have to endure. As well as being stores, I expect They've also been a lifesaver for people caught out in storms. Just in front of us is a viewing point. Needless to say, some of us walk out and have a look. We are again dwarfed by the mountains How in front of us. Fantastic. Looking back at Keith, Joan and Louise in the distance, you get an indication of the scale of the mountains behind them. Wow. How can you ever explain to people just what it feels like to be up here and see these wonderful, wonderful sights? These small, narrow pathways are not only used by walkers, but despite being prohibited by mountain bikers as well. No, same as the other They ones. appear from nowhere and are not going slowly either. You just have to stand back and let them pass. That's it, is it? I can't. We need to stop somewhere for a cup of coffee. This is a coffee stop and a half, isn't it? So we'll just have to rough it here, I suppose. Mountains all around us. Fabulous. Wow. Our journey continues. It's huge. Peter remarked that he saw this hut on his last visit to the Dolomites in the same condition. Time just seems to stand still. I think we've got a carpet of orchids here. In a fairly wet area of the meadow, is what can best be described as a blanket of orchids. It's a sight to behold.
climbing again. We started at Jimmy's hut at 2,222 metres. Although there has been some ups and downs on the walk, I don't think we've descended very far yet. I'll check in a while. Our way forward is now in a downward direction. A short distance down the pathway is the Forcells hut, 2,101 metres. Since Jimmy's hut, we've only descended 121 metres. Not a lot. Wow. Little ants in their shellies. There are still plenty of flowers, although we have seen some of them previously. The path's down to the bottom right there. Looking towards the distant path, it looks like we're going to have quite a steep descent, which we did. There was no point in rushing, though. In some places, it's possible to walk off the stone pathway and over the meadow, shortcutting the pathway. Certainly walking was a lot easier doing that. Peter is very sure-footed and setting a good pace. I could really do with my walking poles, but it's difficult to film and carry the poles as well. Just have to be a bit more careful. Seems a long way away, doesn't it? The restaurant and lift station can be seen in the valley below. They look like doll's houses. Still walking down this shaly stuff here. And it's very, very slippery in parts. I should be using poles, really. We are currently on track three, making for Col Pradat. According to the signpost, it is 30 minutes away. Needless to say, it's uphill, and it took a little longer. What a towering peak that is. Is he? You're going to walk along the I don't know. Walk along the trek up this rise is slow but methodical, I, I, stopping I frequently goes, mainly really. to photograph flowers and of course look at the views. I'm once more trying to take everything in. It is really a stunning landscape. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Reaching the restaurant, and it was time for lunch. We've earned it, and it was a welcome break before we push on. Peter and Amon are taking the path down, whilst we're going to do it the easy way and use the gondola. 
yet another ski lift. From the restaurant, it's just a short walk to the top gondola station. Unfortunately, it's again uphill. Paths everywhere. Look at that. But the views from the top more than made up for that. The bottom station is on the outskirts of Calfrosco, and now we need to find the pathway down to the river. Track number 10 is what we want. After a little searching, we eventually find it. The path goes alongside several dwellings before crossing more alpine meadows. I initially thought this was Colfrosco, but then realised we were further towards La Villa. Further down in the valley, and the meadows are already being cut. Once we reached the pathway that led down to the river, it was all plain sailing. As always, these pathways were clearly marked, and the journey was rather uneventful. You missed the doggy in the basket. Did I? Amon and Peter caught us up just before we reached La Villa, which was rather surprising. The hay harvest here is in feet. full swing, and the flowers have disappeared. But they'll be back again next year. God, how did he get up there? As Peter and Amon came down the pathway on the mountain, the positions of their various flower pictures are not known, so it's fitting that I include them as a finish to this walk. They're going round the long way. We're going up to the town. Tomorrow's walk starts from Kavara.